Good morning, everybody. My name is Yolanda, and I'm here with the SBDC um, from the Maricopa Center. And um, we are here today to talk about our newest um, initiative, which is Grow Your Small Business. We're going to go through the components of that. But first, I want to introduce the folks uh, that are presenting with me today. Uh, CJ, our funding person extraordinaire, is here to talk about um, getting started, like startup business stuff, and also uh, money stuff, funding, etc. And then we have Esmeralda here, who is our extraordinaire behind the scenes, making sure your questions get answered and such. So we'll be relying on her to share some information. If you would like to go to this page, she will put the link for this page in um, the chat, and that will allow you to go back and reference this page later. Um, once we um, are off this webinar, you'll be able to go back and use these um, new services that we have. So I'm going to um, also mention that what we're doing here with this and Grow Your Small Business initiative, much of it is in part funded by Wells Fargo through a grant uh, with Maricopa Community Colleges um, and SBDC is part of executing on that grant. And so we will have uh, Brian Duncan here from Wells Fargo to talk about some funding um, stuff as well tell you what Wells Fargo can do for you as a small business. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to CJ, and she's going to get us started talking about how to start a small business, um, startup resources, etc. Well, thank you, Miss Yolanda. Appreciate you. Um, well, before we get started, a little bit of background on me. Um, I've been with the SBDC for three years now. And prior to that, I was commercial lender for about 20 years. Um, as a lender, I would refer my small business clients to my local SBDCs, and that was in the state of California, and then later on here in Arizona, because I knew that the counselors would provide that one-on-one -on -one counselor service, and that service itself would just strengthen my client's business overall. Um, a little bit further into today's webinar, I'll be discussing how existing businesses can grow their businesses with the help of the SBDC. But for now, I want to address the people who are just beginning their journey on the path to small business ownership. Uh, the SBDCs are here for the entrepreneur that is just getting started as well. Perhaps you're in a position where you really don't know where to start. Um, perhaps you have an idea, but where to begin? Our counselors come from all walks of life and many have been business owners themselves. So when you visit our Grow Your Business website, uh, that you'll see on the screen there, um, and you scroll down to the, I'm ready to start, and then you click on the words that say, get started, yep, right there. Um, you'll go into a field that's gonna ask you just some basic contact questions so that we can reach out to you. Um, after you have filled all of these out and you click on the start your small business, um, after you initiate that, you'll receive a confirmation email that will provide you with a direct link connecting you with your local SBDC website. And then there you'll be able to complete their request for counseling questionnaire. Um, and once that's completed, uh, you'll be assigned to your own personal counselor for that one-on-one -on -one counseling at no cost. Uh, your counselor will be able to give you access to all the other no-cost resources your small business will need. Um, these are valuable resources um, such as Live Plan, which is a really great, robust business planning tool that we use. It includes financial projections, which you'll need if you're planning on applying for a loan. Um, we have resources that help with marketing, um, research tools, as well as assistance in creating a strong social media presence. Um, if you need help understanding the basic financial tools of your small business, such as your profit and loss statements, your balance sheets, cash flow statements, our financial literacy programs will help take the mystery out of all those numbers. Getting your business started with the assistance of your SBDC counselor will help get you on the road to building your own business. How's that sound, Yolanda? I think that sounds awesome. And I would like to say, because I didn't do this in the housekeeping section, if you have questions, 
you should either use the Q&A box or you can use the chat feature because we are monitoring that. So any questions that you have about any of the stuff that we're sharing, definitely jump in and, and add those questions and comments um, in chat or Q&A. And so when we talk about starting a small business, there are lots of different levels of that. You may be in the pre-venture phase where you're still thinking about ideation and we have some workshops that help with that, correct, CJ? That's right, we do. We have a self-paced pre-venture program that you can get in and work at your own speed. It'll cover everything from A to Z and that deals with legal entity choices. It deals with taxation, all of those type of things that you might not think about later on down the line. Yeah. Some of the questions that I get regularly is, you know, I, should I set up an LLC? And then once I get in there at the Arizona Corporation Commission, is it something I can do on my own? Do I need to hire a lawyer? Um, what are the, the steps? What are the pitfalls? Um, what are the other things I need in order to be considered a legal uh, entity? And this is important, especially as we talk about funding later. And also when we talk about our Aero program that we're going to get to, you know, it's good to be an LLC, to have your EIN number that's issued from um, the IRS, to have your business bank account. How are you going to be taking money from clients? Um, then how are you going to be tracking that money? Because you're going to need an accounting system. And it seems overwhelming um, as I start listing all this stuff off. But um, that's why we're here, to sort of help navigate. We have checklists, and most of us have owned small businesses, and we can talk you through uh, many of the things that are required and that you'll need as you get through the process of starting your business. Anything else, CJ, that you want to add? Um, no, I think that's going to cover it. I just want to encourage people to get on that website and get hooked up and then um, they'll get their um, counselor assigned and they'll be off and running real soon. Yep. So one of the things um, to know is that the SBDC is a statewide program. So we have SBDC offices in all of the different counties. So even if you're joining us today from Maricopa County or Phoenix, um, you know, we have a bunch of counselors here in Maricopa for you. But if you're, say, in Yavapai County um, or maybe Pinal County, <clears throat> once you select your county in this form, um, it'll take you directly to a link so that you can get signed up for a counselor that provides services in your area. So just know that it's not just in Phoenix, it's everywhere throughout the state. And hopefully the counselors that we have in those different locations can speak about the types of businesses and business concerns that you have based on your county. Many of you are in more rural areas and our counselors are there to help with that kind of, of business. So um, this is a great program. Just a few simple questions. Hit start your small business and it, you will be on your way. It will get you set up with a link um, to get signed up for counseling. And then you will be you know, contacted by someone and they will be there to help you. No cost is associated with any of this service. No. Because we're in part um, uh, financed or supported, funded is the right word, um, by the SBA. So we're federally funded in part, and that's why we don't charge for our services. And they've kind of like prepaid for it with your tax dollars, so take advantage of it. Yep, absolutely. So the next thing we're going to talk about today is ARO. And um, even though this is going to be the third section on the website where it says Arrow Match, um, we're gonna get back to the money part in a bit, but we're gonna talk about Arrow and what Arrow is. Um, it's a brand new service slash program that we have at the SBDC. And it's designed really to benefit all of our businesses and our student entrepreneurs. So if you are, a student entrepreneur and you're joining us today to see what SBDC, um, SBDC can do for you, this is one of the programs that we have that's designed to help everyone. So I'm going to get um, take you over to the site. Once you click the link, you're going to come to a brand new landing page that tells you all about Aero. There's lots of information here. You can see all about what the Aero program is. Um, the key pieces to know um, are one, we have two types of folks using Aero, service providers and service seekers. 
And what Arrow does is it matches providers and seekers together on a small business to business platform so that service providers can offer their services and service seekers can seek help with projects that they might need um, support with. So let's, I like to use websites and social media as examples, um, but there are all different types of projects. So let's say that I'm a small business and I need a website and I haven't put together a website because it's costly and I'm not even sure where to start. I don't even know how to get started. I don't even know how to find a website developer or designer. I just, I'm lost. So I can sign up as a service seeker. So service seeker equals business owner. I can sign up as a service seeker and I can place a project on our platform and say, hey, um, I need a website and I need it to do the following things. And on the opposite side of that, a service provider can come in and say, hey, I happen to be a new website developer and I can help build that. And we will match both of these folks together so that the service seeker gets a project done and the service provider has something that they can do as a project to add to their portfolio. These are could be first customers for them, getting some experience. Service providers get stipends for their work. Service seekers get free or no cost um, help and support with their projects. So that's kind of how this works together to bring all of our SBDC clients together um, and help them sort of match and help each other. Um, we see that there's a need especially if you're a first time business owner and you wanna get started matching you know, some clients and getting some revenue in, this is a really great way to showcase your skills, get to do some projects <clears throat> and get a little money in your pocket. From the service seeker side, you know, our counselors oftentimes will say, hey, I think you would you know, be able to grow your business more and better if you did some Facebook advertising. So go do that because we don't do Facebook advertising, but we think you need it. So in this case, now we can help you get a Facebook advertising specialist who is a service provider who can come in and help you learn about and get your Facebook ads up. How does that sound, um, CJ? Does it sound like a good overview of what Arrow is? It is. I mean, it is the best win-win I've ever heard of. Uh, the more that I tell people about this, they're going, how long has this been going on? I go, well, it's pretty new. We only started this in February and we're getting lots of people that are so interested in doing this on both sides of the platform. Um, Absolutely. And, and the projects are only limited by your need. So you just have to put your project in. And um, the more that there's in there, the more providers we get in to do those kind of projects and connect you it's it's great and because it's at no cost can you imagine getting a website developed at no cost but our providers sitting here getting a stipend for doing it so they're getting paid yay thanks wells fargo yes so. <laughs> <laughs> yep and so all the reason we have these stipends that we can offer is through this wells fargo grant so we're very grateful um, to wells fargo for that um, so a couple of things to know about you know, becoming a service provider or becoming a service seeker, you can be, uh, be either, um, <clears throat> is that when you come to this Arrow site, um, you'll see that there's two different places you can cl uh, click. I'm a service provider, I'm a service seeker. In both cases, um, you will, I'm gonna click on one of these, you'll reach another landing page. And in this top box, you will see a red button that says, check my readiness. And that's the place you wanna go to, to begin to fill out an application form. It's very simple. Um, the rest of the page provides lots of information, again, um, about the program. But this button up here, um, which appears in a couple different spots, <clears throat> will take you right to our form. And it's just a simple answer some questions um, about your business that allows us to contact you and send you the additional information that you need to get set up on our um, business to business site, name of your business, the county you're in, your name. And these are all pretty standard questions. We've tried to reduce the number of questions we're asking you. Um, you know, what's your website? So once you get all of these uh, questions answered, then you will, you will receive, um, let me get through all of these, right? Lots of different questions. You'll see this submit button. Once you submit, you will receive an email from the program with a link 
And that link will send you to the next piece of our platform, which is Ripen. Ripen is a platform, a software as a service online platform that we are using to match to, and manage this program. And so you will get a link in the email. It's super important that you only use the link that you receive in the email um, because that will get you set up as one of our Arrow clients. It's particularly important for service providers uh, because um, if you want to get paid the stipend, right, you'll want to be able to um, make sure you're in the right place when you get there. So just as it is for service seekers on this page, the same applies for service providers. Um, same thing, there's a check my readiness button. You'll go through, fill out a form <clears throat> and receive an email regarding how to get set up on the Ripen platform. Um, CJ, did you wanna add something? I did. Um, Cause one of the questions I remember hearing back on uh, when they go through, what if they don't have a website yet? It, it shows an asterisk in there that it's a required question. Wasn't there something that they could put in there? Sure. I'm, yeah. I mean, you can just put a generic website in there, www or, you know, dot my website dot com and it'll, yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll accept it, right? Okay. So that's yeah. the workaround. Great. So that'll, yeah, that's a workaround. So far I've only encountered that one, that issue one time. Um, but, um, but yeah, that could possibly happen. That's the workaround. Just put something in there and um, it will continue taking you through the rest of the questions. Um, once you get through this part and you receive that email, um, you will receive the link and we'll, we're going to look at that. But one thing I want to note is that you must be an SBDC client in order to participate in this program. And that's one of the questions that pops up in the form. So it'll ask you at some point in this form what, uh, whether or not you are an SBDC client. If you are not an SBDC client, that's okay. You'll say no, you'll click through, you'll get through the rest of the form, and then you'll receive a link to get signed up to be an SBDC client. Then you can go through that process. You'll talk to a counselor. Um, they'll get you into the Arrow program. So it's okay if you are not currently an SBDC client. This process will take you through getting to be an SBDC client. Um, and those of you that um, are currently SBDC clients, you will get a different link to send you to the platform since you're ready to go. Um, understand also that we're going to be reaching out to you at, at, through this process via email. One of the things I've noticed um, as we've you know started to build this program is that sometimes um, you're an SBDC client, but you haven't engaged with us in a while, and that's okay. Um, We'll just remind you to engage with your counselor, talk with them, get some additional information. All of our counselors uh, understand our, this program. And if they can't answer your questions, then our team can. So there's an email that you can reach out to us if you have questions while going through some of this. It's sbg at domail.maricopa.com. And that's a mouthful. So Esmeralda is going to make sure that she adds that um, in the chat window for you. So co copy that in case you do need to reach out to us. Um, we'll be monitoring that email, email box and we'll get to you on that. Um, anything else? Anything I missed, um, CJ? No, I really think that you've covered it. I just can't encourage enough to take advantage of this program. I mean, there's no yep. reason not to. <laughs> so I'm going to give you just a quick peek at what the ripen part of this looks like. And again, I don't want you to get confused by the ripen and the arrow and the SBDC because we have lots of names floating around. Ripen is just an online service that's helping us manage this. So it's still Arrow, it's still SBDC. Um, when you get into the program, you'll see that we have lots of different program uh, uh, projects popping up. <clears throat> so um, we have different types of areas that we noticed were good fits initially as we're growing this project. So accounting and finance projects, communication projects, visual arts and media, and you'll select where your project belongs in this process. Um, this advancing entrepreneurship is sort of a catch-all. If you don't uh, see one of these cards that is a match for the type of project that you want to do, you can drop it in there. So since we've been talking about web design and development, we can come into here and see the various projects 
um, that have been submitted so far for website um, folks seeking website support. So from this perspective, we have a couple of clients who are looking to get a website done. This is a place you will still you will also see if you're a service provider and you'll be able to see, oh, well, there's some projects there. Maybe that's something that I can apply for. And this is how you'll go through the process. There is a chat function in the lower right corner. And this is the place that you want to just remember. You can click on it anytime. The Ripen team um, that answers that chat is part of our Arrow team too. So they are well-versed with our program and can navigate and help you get through any of the steps that don't make sense or you're lost or not sure. Um, that's what this is all for. So one thing I want to, and this is just a sneak preview. There's lots to see on the platform and I don't want to overwhelm, right? Because we don't have tons of time. Today is just sort of a demo to get you started and get you seeing what's happening. One thing I will say is that I have already had several of my clients because I'm also a counselor at Maricopa. I've had several of my clients go through the process on both sides. And so I've had one of my clients get her website done, her very first website. Um, she's having them, someone help her with social media. Uh, she's posted a project to do an update on her LinkedIn profile and bio so that it's updated and putting her in the best possible light. So these are some, just some basic types of projects that are already existing on the site that clients are getting help with. On the opposite side of that, some of the clients have had um, service providers come in and provide accounting, getting bookkeeping up to date, or getting QuickBooks set up um, so that you have your chart of accounts ready and all of that stuff if you're just getting started. Social media is big. Website seems to be a big one. Um, writing, if you need um, a press release, if you need some copywriting help, just getting the writing for your website done, that's another great way to use the platform. So anything that you can think of that has been a back burner project, one of those things that is just sitting, waiting to be done that you have not had a chance to get to, that's the kind of project that makes perfect sense for the platform. And hopefully in the future, as we grow it and it gets bigger, there'll be all different types of uses but right now we're seeing that these digital type services seem to be very popular and seem to be working really great um, for our service. Do you want to add anything to that, uh, CJ? Um, no, not really. Um, it's just that if you get started into here and you are feel like I'm confused or anything, there's so many avenues to get your questions answered and get back on. Um, track with it. So take advantage Absolutely. of things. Absolutely. So one of the things, um, the email is one way, uh, the email that we added into the chat, that's like your first line of defense, send an email, um, ask your questions. Um, and, and really we're looking for when you get stuck. If you're on the site and you're already registered and you're having difficulty navigating, the best place to go is to get help from Ripen because they are so familiar with their platform and they can direct you um, when we can't because we don't have that, you know, back of the back end of the website kind of um, view. So we can't always see where you're at and what you're working on and be able to navigate for you. So Ripen's the best place to go for that. Um, so I want to also just say we do have projects in the pipeline, ready for people to do work. We have projects that are completed. We have service providers that are receiving stipends. So all of this is moving and growing. And so don't be afraid to jump in and ask us a question that, you know, or talk to your counselor. Hey, would this be a good fit for Arrow? How do I scope out the project? How do I make sure I make it, you know, a desirable looking project? So somebody will come in and match with it. So your business counselor, at your SBDC office can help you with much of those questions. And if you, like I say, if there's something else and you're not getting where you wanna be and you're not getting your question answered, then holler at us because we're always available in here to help. Um, we do have some questions, so I, I wanna um, address those. Um, in the Q&A, Yasmin, um, how are you? Um, your question is, will Arrow help if I am looking for help creating a curriculum? It's possible, depends on what kind of curriculum you're looking to develop. If it's for a personal small business workshop, say you wanna do, I wanna give a workshop on how to do your first website, um, that sort of thing, you might be able to find somebody who can help you um, in the communications area by helping you write and navigate how to set up um, you know, your first sort of online class. If it's curriculum for you know, higher education, that's a totally different thing. 
Um, and so that we might not have people that are qualified to do that, but until you post a project, we don't know. And, and I'm always in there kind of looking at who are the service providers and how can I nudge them towards projects that they might be qualified to do? So we are in there kind of navigating and helping move things along. So I would say, put your project in there. If you need help scoping it out, talk with your counselor to get some, some support with that. Hopefully that um, answers your question. If you have anything else, let's see, can we unmute Yasmin? Or Yasmin, if you wanna unmute yourself and jump in here, um, and let us know that we got your question answered, that'd be great. And Yasmin could be busy taking notes. <laughs> so if you wanna jump in Yasmin at any time, just do that. Um, do we have other questions that I may have missed, Esmeralda? No, we don't have any questions at the moment. No, oh, there's, actually, there is one. There is one. So yeah. uh, the question is, are there any services to assist with getting different certifications? Yes, they are, especially if you're talking about a certification for women-owned business or um, veteran-owned business or those type of things. Yes, um, the SBDC um, has services that can, or assistance in getting to those certifications. So absolutely, if, the, if those are the type of certifications you're looking at. So, and, yeah, I'm sorry. Said, thank you. Yes, and so um, hopefully I'm gonna pronounce this correctly. <laughs> Benika, did that answer your question? You can jump on and open your mic if you wanna speak or just let us know in the chat. I wanna make sure that we got your question answered. Yes, it did. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm going to move away from Arrow. Of course, if you want more information, we are here, here to help. And at the end, we'll have some additional time to answer questions because you might be stewing and thinking about how does this make sense for me. Um, but I'm going to take you back to <clears throat> our main landing page. And I'm going to introduce again, CJ, and she's going to jump in here. She's our money team person. And she's going to jump in here, talk a little bit about the other part of our program, which is getting funding for your business. And that is the second icon on the main page to grow your business, grow your small business page. <clears throat> There's an icon right in the middle that says grow, and that's your money area. And so CJ, I'm going to hand it over to you. And it looks like we've also been joined by Brian from Wells Fargo, Wave Brian. And he's going to talk to us a little bit too. So handing it back over, CJ. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so now I'd like to speak to the business owners that have already started their businesses and are ready to grow. Um, your business may be one or two years old or maybe 20 years old. And we deal with businesses of all ages at all stages. Um, our SPDCs can help you become stronger, leaner, and help you become lender ready, which is my world, part of the money world, part of the money team world. Um, back on our screen here where it says grow your business, um, when you scroll down there and you see the I'm ready to grow, um, all you do is you click on that get started. And um, again, I'll ask you just a handful of questions so that we can reach out to you and contact or connect with you. Um, once you fill this in, and it also asks about what county you're in because that's important. Um, we will click on the grow your business. That will initiate an email to you that confirms that we've received your request of inquiry. And then from that point, we will reach out to you. Somebody from the money team will most likely be me. Um, we'll reach out to you to see what the next step is, where you're at, what your growth goals are, um, what your challenges are. Uh, we will look at your finances, um, uh, P&Ls, balance sheets, or if you don't have those because you haven't grown to that part yet, maybe you're just using an Excel spreadsheet, we're gonna help you uh, get around that to get you more lender ready too, because a banker's going to want a P&L and a balance sheet and those types of things. So. Um, once you get all of that information and you click on the grow your business and you're in the system, um, 
it's just a process of getting you connected with that lead counselor again and walking through the steps. And so we have a partnership throughout all of Arizona. We have 10 different sites, um, centers that have team members ready to assist you at whatever your level of banking or business is at that moment. And depending on your growth goal, what you need to do. A um, lot of our um, advisors, like I said before, have been business owners. So they, they know what they're doing and they can help you walk through some of those hurdles. Um, some of them are industry specific specialists that they know what they're doing with those type of things with if it's restaurants or if it's technology or maybe it's import or export, those type of things. So um, we cover all the different industries that are out there. And um, if we um, run into something, if one council runs into something that's a little more um, not their, you know, their strength, they reach out to another counselor and they do co-counseling. So in a sense, you don't get one council, you get a team. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I've always used the SBDC when I was a lender and why I promote it so much now. It's just because that team effort. So, and I can, I can speak to that because I have several clients that CJ and I are working on um, to get uh, lending for new startup businesses. Um, and so, you know, it helps me because I wasn't a banker. I've never done that kind of job. So I don't know all of the ins and outs. And it's always great when CJ comes on board, she takes a look at the client's business plan and asks them questions about where they're at. She puts her lender hat on and she looks at it from the perspective of what is a lender going to see and think um, when they hear about you know, what your lending needs are and how viable that is. So it's a great process. And if you're not really ready or right there yet, I mean, that's why we're here to help to help kind of help you get to that point where you're ready for lending. I'm gonna just, there's a couple of questions and I think we might as well answer them now. Um, and, and Brian may be able to jump in on this too. Um, does SBDC help with obtaining a credit card? Um, and so we don't really help with that. However, we can help guide and advise on that. And it depends on where you're at with your business, um, what your credit score is like, I had one client last year who had no credit because he, he was young and he didn't have a car loan or a house or anything like that. And I told him, you know, just start and get your first credit card, even if it's only $200 limit, right? And he did. He got the first credit card. It was like a $200 limit. He had to pay for the card, you know, $25 a year, but his business has grown exponentially. And now you know, he has a really robust credit limit on his credit card. So it's just all about starting. You got to start somewhere and you got to keep building and growing. So hopefully that answers um, that question. What do you think, uh, Brian? I haven't given CJ a chance to introduce you, but credit cards from Wells Fargo, is that kind of the thing? Yeah, process. No, I, I think I think that uh, uh, you you literally stole one of my bullet points that I was going to share with uh, with the group, which is, um, start early uh, in the process, and it may not be exactly what you need, um, but by building credit inside of the business, um, it, 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 it's vital. And, and so depending on the situation, you may even have to do a cash secured card where you, know, you, you give the bank 500 and they give you a $500 uh, uh, credit card. And you think, well, why, why would I do that? I would, I'll just spend my 500. And it, it, it's forecasting later on down the road, you're showing the bank that you have the ability to manage a, a, a credit vehicle like that, uh, that will sooner than later, will get off of that cash card. But if, if you don't have the ability to do the, if you can't stand on your credit or your assets, at least initially, uh, I would highly recommend just starting somewhere. And even if it's not, uh, uh, if it doesn't solve all of your needs, start building it early. Uh, because it, it, the, the situation is only going to compound, right? You may need a thousand or ten thousand dollar credit card today. As your business grows, that might grow to 15, 20, 50, you know, whatever it may be. And if you haven't started to at least begin to think about 
uh, these types of things, it, it's going to be a lot less likely that you're that you'll be able to prove for that fifty thousand dollar car or line of credit or whatever it may be. Yeah, I'd like to tag on that too. Is that um, getting started early? That starts the the timetable. How long you've had history, and um, one of the uh, questions I see from Maria and they're um, talking about. Since we're given the information here, do you need to still speak to us? Yes, you do. This is such high level. There is so much more information out there that we provide as counselors. Um, but it doesn't matter what bank you go to for a secured credit card or anything, but you want to make sure that whatever credit you are applying for, you ask the question of, do they report that credit? And make sure it's business, not just personal. Personal is a separate issue we're talking strictly about business. And you know, going out and applying for a, um, a DNB, a Dun & Bradstreet number, um, getting that started, it's just so that timetable starts and that's where the history begins. So if you wait until you need it, well, then you have no history to show that you managed it properly, so. Yep, and I think just to piggyback on that, um, Maria, you, if you already do have a counselor and you're actively working with a counselor, um, you can totally continue to communicate with that counselor and talk to them about startup stuff or funding stuff. You definitely do not need to fill these out if you already have a counselor and you're actively working with them on this stuff. Um, so I'm gonna just apologize for not properly introducing Brian. So I'm gonna leave that to CJ, but we get excited over here, so. <laughs> Run, you know, just something get in our way. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, let me take a step back. Brian Duncan is the small business development manager with Wells Fargo. And as you've heard, Wells Fargo is the one that provided the Arizona SBDC with this generous grant for the Aero Project and Grow Your Business program. And Brian is here to share some insights and best practices for applying for a business loan. Brian, take it away. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, CJ, for that. Uh, and excited to be here. Uh, you know, this is a passion of mine. I've, I've been in a role, I've been uh, uh, fortunate uh, to be in a role where I, I lead a team of what we call business development officers and they're local bankers in the market that uh, talk to small business owners, learn about their business, understand kind of their cash cycle and, and, and how cash flow works both in and out, understanding their APs, ARs, or sorry, accounts payables, accounts receivables. Um, and, and what I really enjoy about the role is I get to learn about a lot of different small businesses in the Valley uh, in, in some of the other states that, that I manage. Um, and, and that's, that's really honestly where my passion is. You know, I, you, yeah, I've never uh, had an opportunity to go from a morning meeting and learning about how this individual is, uh, you know, running or we, we were looking at a, a milk manufacturer, right? And then in the, in the afternoon, talk to a, I literally just got off the phone prior, that's why I'm a little late, uh, uh, with a pest control, local pest control company here in Phoenix that has just grown exponentially and it's really exciting for them, but also, uh, you know, the, their expertise is pest control. It's not banking. And so their business has grown. Uh, and as their business grows, their, their needs, specifically banking needs have changed and, and they don't know what they don't know. Uh, and so that's, that's what I love is kind of digging into it and then making suggestions, uh, not specifically with Wells Fargo, but just some of the things that they can do uh, and what we're going to talk about today as far as uh, credit and, you know, what do some banks look for? What, what would we look for at Wells Fargo um, that is going to be very similar across the board with, with other lenders? Um, and, and so, you know, the, the first thing that, that I would say is uh, clean financials. Um, and so when we ask for two years of tax returns, or a lot of the times we will even ask for a balance sheet and a, and a profit and loss. And so um, when you are applying for credit, you believe it or not, uh, I, I get probably about 20% of the time, um, I have borrowers that don't have the financials that we need to apply for the credit that they're asking for. And so 
Um, it doesn't need to come from a CPA. It doesn't need to be audited financials from a um, from an, an accountant. Um, but we need to see something, and so it can be as simple as uh, you know. I'll I'll plug QuickBooks, but it's a big you know accounting uh, program. They're able to generate P and Ls on the fly, um, and so that will that will help us uh, assess the needs of the business, and then and then make the appropriate decision on on, on those uh, on those credit needs. Um, the 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 second one is. Um, and, and we we literally just talked about. It. I wasn't uh, I wasn't fibbing when I said that you uh, we 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 took one of my bullets is start early, and and honestly, if you do not have a credit vehicle uh, and and a credit vehicle is is offered to you, take it. You know you can always you know for Wells Fargo we can relook at the credit vehicle every six months. And so um, if you are new to a business card or a business line of credit and you believe that the business needs a $50,000 line of credit uh, and a $10,000 line of credit is offered to you, um, use it, take it. Uh, and again, I'm not saying just for Wells Fargo, but if there's not a better option on the table, take the line of credit because uh, building that that credit in the business name is absolutely vital. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you one of the biggest counter offers uh, or counter reasons, I should say, or even decline reasons uh, for a line of credit is a customer has not shown their their ability to use this credit vehicle. So for a line of credit, um, the underwriter will say, "Hey, we this person's never had." access to $50,000, why would, why would we extend that to them? And the business needs it, right? But we don't know if they can use it and leverage it properly. And so that $50,000 request may be reduced to 10,000 because there's not an experience of leveraging and using that line of credit as it should be. And that kind of leads me into my next, uh, my next bullet, which is know your credit vehicle, right? A line of credit is different than a credit card and it should be leveraged different. You know, a credit card should be used in revolve or it, it, you have a 30 day, it's basically like a free 30 day loan, right? Um, and so you can use your credit card and then at the end of the 30 days, that's when you pay interest, okay? Um, and so that is for the day to day operations of the business. You know, if you're in a service industry, where you're in the where you're in the car and you need gas, that's a that's that's a credit card situation. A line of credit situation is a situation where you're needing uh, a a maybe a more substantial amount of money to get you through a cash cycle. So um, expenditures have gone out, but you haven't gotten paid from a job yet. Okay, um, and so you're kind of in limbo where where you know that money's coming in. But, but it hasn't come in yet and you need to pay people, right? So that's called a, a working capital line. Um, and when you do get paid, paying off the line of credit or what in banking term is called revolving the line um, is, is very critical. Um, I have seen in the past where individuals use a line of credit like it's a loan. And so they never once pay it down or revolve it. So they have 100,000, and it just over over the course of two years have just steadily creeped up, and and now they're like, well, that hundred thousand, it's it's not working for me anymore. I need a larger line. And I go, well, you, you haven't used the line. You 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 use it as your personal loan, um, but that's not that's not the line of credit. And so the bank is not going to just simply increase your line of credit because you've run out of uh, of cap in your line of credit. And so understanding your vehicle and what it's really truly meant for is also very important. And, and you know, if you're wanting to go buy a truck, let's say, uh, and again, I, I use service industry because I just got off the phone with a pest control company and that's what we were talking about, is then, then you need to get a term loan. You need to get a term loan and actually buy the vehicle the proper way, have payments, 
and 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 use it just like a personal car that we would buy at a, at a dealership or go to go to a bank to to, to go and yeah, uh, uh, make that payment. I'm sorry. He says, yeah, don't use the line of credit to purchase a truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but I I say this because I know banking, but small business owners may not know some of these things, and and so if something that is that is, you know, foundational for me. Uh, a lot of the times we're having conversations with, you know, business owners that have been in business for one or two years and they don't know these things. And, and I, I think that banks, I'm gonna generalize here. I think banks do a disservice to all of the small business owners because they don't explain these things. They just expect you to know it. Uh, and, and I feel like it puts you at a disadvantage. So we all the time explain, hey, these are the, these are the different things that, that we need to have a conversation about. Um, the, the, as far as applying for a line. So now we've, we, we've talked about kind of good financials, understanding the different uh, financial vehicles out there, credit card, line of credit, term debt, right? Or they're kind of the big threes. Um, now, now we're applying. Okay, uh, a couple of pieces of uh, advice that I can provide to you know all business owners is one: put everything out on the table, right? Um, if you've had a bankruptcy, if you've had a foreclosure, uh, um, if uh, um, if you've gotten in trouble with the law and you've been convicted, these are all things that we need to know about in the, as a lender. And uh, a lot of the times, if we know about them up front, we can at least address them. Because uh, I have had times in the past, I've been doing this for qu quite a bit, uh, quite a, uh, quite a bit, or many many years, um, that people think that we're not gonna we're not gonna find it, uh, we're not gonna uncover it. Um, trust me when I say that we will absolutely uncover it. Uh, you know, this is maybe your first, second, third loan application that you've applied. Uh, we do hundreds a day. And so we have a really good process of uncovering all of the risks in the deal before lending out uh, money. It's a, it's a fiduciary responsibility Do we take serious for our shareholders. And so uh, I tell you all of this is you're not going to, you're not going to pull one over uh, uh, from the bank. Uh, just be upfront, be honest. A lot of the times we can address it. Uh, I was recently with, uh, uh, I, I, we were looking at a deal outside of the state of Arizona where uh, an individual actually, uh, they filed bankruptcy and Wells Fargo was one of the debtors that actually lost money on it. A lot of the times, I would say nine times out of 10, if we lose money on, on a particular borrower, we won't lend money to that individual again. You know, they're, they're, they're basically uh, on a list that we just will not extend capital to them anymore. Um, we were able to get an approval because of the strength of the deal, and it was long ago, and the individual uh, now has shown their ability to, to be a little bit more uh, um, uh, conservative with, uh, with their finances, and we were able to get that approval. And so uh, I really appreciated that as a borrower, as, a, as the lender, to say, hey, this is a situation, you know, is this going to be a problem? I don't know. Let, let me let me check and we were able to get the the exception for it and it's it's a heck of a lot easier to get the exception on the front end than midway through and then you start to lose your credibility the underwriters looking at it and going hey this person didn't talk to you about this what else are they not telling us and and, and so you start to inject doubt into your deal uh and and you do not want to be in that position as a salesperson uh you know not as an underwriter as a salesperson when you start to get doubt in a deal. Uh, you know, one of the five C's of credit is character. Uh, when you start to lose character, uh, 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 credibility on your character, it, it's, it, it's very hard to overcome. Um, the other one is the, uh, the, the, the liquidity stance. And so when we're asking what your liquidity stance is or, uh, um, or how much cash do you have in the bank is another way of saying it. Um, don't just tell us what we want to hear. So if 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 you're buying a uh, let's just say a piece of real estate, okay, and you need to put five percent down, and and let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar piece of real estate. By the way, if you find a hundred thousand dollar piece of real estate, 
call me directly. I'd love to take a look at it. Uh, but let's just play the game that it's $100,000 for math's sake. Um, and you have 5,000 down, but you really have 20,000, but you only put 5,000 because that's what you want. The, that's what you think the bank wants to see. Um, and then we decline it for lack of, lack of liquidity, lack of cash. And you go, well, wait a minute, I have the 5% down. Why, why I do have the liquidity. Um, and through an underwriter's eyes, they're seeing this and they're saying, okay, 5,000, they've got to pay us 5,000. We're, we're zapping them. We're, they have zero cash after this transaction. And so if they buy this property and let's say an air conditioning unit goes out, they have, they have no cash. And so the, you know, they're not going to have the ability to repair this property. And, and so we're actually putting them in a situation where you know, uh, we don't want to take back the property. You know, that, that, is, that is last case scenario. We will do absolutely everything in our power, believe it or not, um, that, that we, will, we do not want to be property owners. We, we want to make a loan, uh, receive our payment, and, and, and receive it for as many years as you have the loan and, and, uh, and then ride off into the sunset. And so we really don't want to take back a property. And so putting someone in a situation where everything has to work out absolutely perfect and, and nothing bad can happen, uh, you know, that injects risk. And so make sure that you disclose uh, your liquidity uh, in, in its totality versus uh, just what you think you want us to, to see. So I've shared a lot uh, and I feel like I've been talking a bunch. So uh, I'll, I'll stop there and, and see if we have any questions clarifying or um, anything on, 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 the, on the group side. So maybe I can ask you a couple of questions that I've recently had from clients. So one client asked me, um, and I've heard this before, um, why do I have to secure my personal stuff for a business loan, like my house or whatever? Why do I have to use personal collateral when it's a business loan? And, um, you know, why do I have to personally guarantee this business loan when it's a business loan? How would you uh, respond to a question like that? Yeah. So um, depending on the situation, right? Every situation is a little bit different. Um, but uh, when you are a lender, uh, you're always trying to mitigate risks. Okay. And so um, at, the, at the end of the day, if we're taking a piece of collateral, uh, and, and I'll tell you like the SBA program, uh, they like to, they like to collateralize their loans as much as they possibly can. And so, um, basically what, what they are doing is there's, they are trying to limit the risks in that, in that loan, because we want to, uh, we want to make it to where you, you really think twice before defaulting on that loan, uh, um, because, Ultimately, again, at the end of the day, we just want our payment. And so as, as, long as, uh, as long as we're receiving the payment, there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever. Um, but a lot of the times, if it's a riskier loan, let's say it's a new business owner or the, and again, there's a lot of different variables, you know, you know uh, there's something in, in the credit, uh, there's limited liquidity, uh, it's a large dollar amount comparative to the income of the property, uh, not of the property of the business, excuse me. Um, there's a variety of different reasons that, that, uh, that we would do that, but to mitigate that risk as opposed to declining the loan outright, we can say, hey, you know what, there's this other piece of property that has some equity. We can get comfortable with it because by taking another piece of, uh, of collateral, we might be able to get more comfortable with the cash flow or with the uh, limited liquidity or whatever it may be. And then uh, the other side is the, the personal guarantee. Um, the personal guarantee is, you know, I, I, I put it, I put it uh, uh, whenever a business owner asks me, hey, well, why do I have to personally guarantee the loan? Well, uh, I would say, okay, would you lend me $100,000 uh, or, you know, whatever it is, $50,000. Uh, I, I don't promise to give it back, but I'm good for it. Uh, uh, would you be okay with that? And a lot of times they go, well, no, I would, I would want something 
uh, guaranteeing that, that I would get my $50,000 back or my 20 or my 10 or whatever it may be. And I go, well, that's kind of what the banks do it is we hope to never use it. We hope to never leverage it. Again, I go back to our, our, our main goal is to just get our payment and, and, and make the loan and then you know get that loan down to, to zero. Um, but we also want some skin in the game from, from the borrower to show, hey, uh, uh, we're both in this together. We're willing to extend a little bit. We need a little extension on the other side of the table. Yep, yep. Yeah, I try to remind folks that banks are businesses too. Yeah. Uh, and so in the process of lending money, right, they have to be able to get paid in order for them to be able to lend more money. Um, and so um, definitely understanding that, you know, your, your business is still going to be tied to your personal um, around these types of things because banks don't want to lend without feeling like they can maybe get paid if something is to go south. And we, there are no guarantees. Right. With businesses, we know that there are no guarantees. We don't know how it's going to go. We, we don't know the pandemic is coming. Right. There are all different kinds of reasons why a business might not be able to make good on um, a loan or maybe have to, you know, close their business. So these are ways in which banks can, you know, remove some of that risk of, of lending you money and make your chances of getting some of that money um, a lot better. And it's also worth noting that um, just because let's just say that we're doing a, a property purchase, right, for a uh, an owner occupied building, and we're asking for a PG or a personal guarantee. Okay, um, if if that loan goes south, that doesn't mean that we're going to take the property, close the business, and go after you personally. Um, if if our exposure is let's let's go back to one hundred thousand. Okay. And there's a hundred thousand dollars in that building. We'll take back the building. We're legally we're done. We in anything over that hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you had two hundred thousand dollars in the in the, in the building. We would take our hundred, and then we would have to give the proceeds. You know whatever was left over. If if we went that way, um, a lot of the times we'll just foreclose and take on the property itself. Uh, if there is enough equity, a lot of times the borrower will just sell the property themselves, right? Uh, they'll, they'll get out of it. They'll get out of the situation by liquidating the, the asset. Um, but it's not a, just because the business is guaranteed, you guarantee personally, and the building is used for collateral, doesn't mean that that all happens all at once. We really am just going to the point where we limit our, life, our, our, our exposure. And then if the building doesn't get us paid back and then the business doesn't get us paid back. And then the final step is personal. Um, again, does that ever happen? Yeah, but very rarely does that happen. Uh, typically uh, we have enough uh, um, exposure in other areas to where a PG doesn't come into play unless it's a very, very large loan. Got it, got it. Thanks, yeah. Brian. Um, CJ, do you have anything to add? I know we're running up against um, our hour times. So I don't want to have people um, waiting on us to finish up, but if you have anything else, CJ, to add? No, I don't. I am just appreciative of Brian being able to join us and share his wisdom and the yep. ins and outs of getting those lender secrets out there. I love those. Yep. And get people on our website to get signed up. Yes. So check in the chat. We've got the link there. We've got the email uh, address if you have additional questions. Um, we, you know, we're here to help and, and it is no cost, so there's no downside. Um, I want to thank Brian for joining us today. It's always really super helpful um, to hear your tips and tricks. Uh, I learn something every time. And um, thanks, uh, Esmeralda, for helping keep us on track. And um, CJ, for giving us all that great information about starting a business and funding. And I hope that you all will um, join Arrow uh, or learn more about it. If you have further questions, again, um, jump and get the email quickly on the chat. And um, we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the time. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.